everything from clutter block number one, which is my stuff keeps me stuck in the past. These are things that remind us of our bygone days, you know, and look, I'm not saying wipe out your memorabilia, wipe out your history. But if your life is full of so much stuff from the past, it's telling you that your best days are behind you. You know, it's not getting you to look forward. And especially, I see this so much with my female clients with clothes that they can't fit into anymore. Life happens, gravity happens. You can't wear what you used to be able to wear, but they hold on to it because I'm going to get back there someday. Mm -hmm. And then what they're really just doing is having, you know, things that make them feel bad about themselves hanging in their closet. So, you know, that's, that's it. Clutter block number three. This is me. Listeners, full disclosure, it's clutter is avoiding my stuff. I don't like to open my mail. I don't like to, like, I just don't like to deal with the business of being an adult. So I see that so much things, you know, build up. Um, they keep going. You just are like, I got, yeah, I'm not going to deal with it. And then the clutter, the paper clutter builds up. Um, one of my favorite clutter blocks and one of the best ones to break free of is clutter block number five. I'm not worth my good stuff. So it's this feeling that we're not good enough to wear the pretty blouse or to burn the nice candle or to use the china, that we have all this stuff that's special for someday and then not realizing that today's special. Today's special. Wear the nice blouse. Wear it. Feel good. Eat your pizza off china. Like I just, I, you know, this idea of like, there's this time and you know, we're, it's a very different world than even our parents that people don't really set a table anymore. We don't use that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden it's just sitting, you know, right. in your house and then your then your parents pass it along to you and you're like, I don't want it, but it was special to them. And you, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, which is clutter block number seven, stuck with other people's stuff, right? So that it's things that people have gifted you, things that people have um, left to you. You know, you can't, Um, it, it, it's very, it's very, very, very insidious, right? Because it comes with so much emotion, especially if it's somebody who's passed away, Mm -hmm. you know, if it's historical or your family history. And we all have those things. Eileen, I'm sure you have it in your life that something your family's given to you and they're like, this is very important because grandma got it from great grandma. And you're like, but I don't want it. (laughs) (laughs) So in order to move through each of these clutter blocks, is it the same strategy or is it really like a different tactic for each one because they're so different? Yeah, I think it's a combination. I think at the baseline, it's the same in that acknowledging, like that's the first step to acknowledge and say like, oh, okay, this isn't just, I'm not just lazy or I'm not just a bad housekeeper. Like I have all these stories. And once you realize that it's just a story, you can untell it to yourself. Mm -hmm. But also a lot of things that I talk about in both books is finding finding something to do that doesn't revolve around the stuff. For example, my mother is 80 and in great health and, you know, doing great. She doesn't need any more stuff. Every time I go see her, she gives me stuff, gives it, take it away. She gives it to my niece, so, you know. And what I realized is gifts for her now, she wants to see us. Mm, That's what she wants to do. Yeah. She'd rather I spent that money on a plane ticket to spend time with her than to buy her another scarf that she doesn't need, yeah. you know? So I think it's, un- and here like, I, my mom wants me to come visit too. <laughs> so I think it's a, identifying it and understanding where it comes from and then seeing what you can do to replace it. <laughs> 